welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a cool new piece of software called OpenEar. Now I stumbled across this project on GitHub as I like to search for new RTL SDR based projects from time to time. And I think this project is worth a mention. So what's unique about OpenEar? Well, firstly, it's an all in one software package that allows you to receive and decode a range of popular digital modes without needing to link or forward audio to a third party application. Built into the software are decoders for AM, narrow FM and wide FM. The digital modes that are supported are Tetra, DMR, Poxag and ADSB. And this is a great start because to decode all of these protocols, you do not need any other software. Well, apart from RTLSDR.dll, which I'll talk about in a moment. Now to obtain the software, just navigate to GitHub and download the package. It's not currently open source, but the developers have mentioned that once the project is complete, it will be open source to allow other developers to contribute. Now, once you've downloaded the archive, simply uncompress it and then navigate to the uncompressed config folder. You'll notice support for 32 and 64 bit Windows machines. And as I'm on Windows 10, I'm going to be running the 64 bit version. Now, when you first start the application, you will be prompted with an error, but don't worry, this is easily fixed by downloading RTL SDR zip file from the Osmocom website. I will leave a link down in the description for both OpenEar's GitHub page and where to download RTL SDR.dll. And once you've downloaded the RTL SDR zip file, uncompress it and locate the RTL SDR.dll file. Copy this file and place it into the same folder as OpenEar.exe file. Now with your RTL SDR dongle attached, and connected to an antenna, you can now go ahead and start the OpenEar application. The RTL SDR dongle that I used for this was the Nuilex Smarty SDR receiver. You can find these in my Amazon store links in the description if you don't own one. Okay, so we all know what decoding AM and FM is like, so let's take a look at how well OpenEar decodes DMR. Here I'm tuned to my local DMR repeater. Other stations who would like to get in contact with Denmark, so right until, uh, uh, until now, uh, uh, Golf 1, November Golf Romeo, I'll give you the best 73s and uh, 55. All the best to you and your family, and uh, many thanks for the night or so. And I uh, hope to hear you again in the near future. Um, uh, Golf 1, November Golf Romeo, this is Oscar Solo 9, Sierra Kill Lima, wishing you 73 and uh, good night. And, uh, and uh, as I said, thank you for the night or so. So bye bye, my friend, and uh, take care. And I uh, hope to hear you again in the near future. Yes, okay then. Oscar Zulu 9, Seattle Kilo Lima, G1 NCO. Yes, 73s, best 73s. You stay safe and uh, look after your family there and hope everything's okay. And, uh... So here we have a conversation going on between a couple of fellow ham radio users. And to me, it was decoding very, very well. To tune to the repeater, I just adjusted the frequency in the top left to roughly where the repeater's output frequency is, and then just clicked on the waterfall to fine tune it. It locked really easy and quickly to the digital DMR transmission. You will have noticed at the top middle of the screen that the digital mode type is shown, and then next to it is V traffic, which indicates that there is voice traffic being decoded. Now what I'm unsure of at the moment is how open ear handles DMR when there are two active time slots. Now, if you didn't know, DMR allows two users to be using the repeater at the same time. And this is because of two available time slots, time slot one and time slot two. If you think about how DSD plus handles this, it plays one time slot from one speaker and then the other slot from the other speaker when there are two active time slots. Also, we do not get any information about the caller's ID or even which time slot is being decoded. Now, hopefully this is something that the developers can add over time. Even if we had the DMR ID, we could use some form of lookup to see the call sign of the person and talking. Now let's move on to Tetra decoding. This appears to work and there are lots of Tetra signals close to where I live, but unfortunately they all seem to be encrypted. So I wasn't able to check the audio quality. I'm still searching for an unencrypted Tetra transmission. So if I find one, I'll keep you updated. Now next on the list is Poxag, or otherwise known as Pagers. Where I live, I can receive a few Pager transmissions and they are extremely strong. While in Poxag mode, you will notice a table appear at the bottom of the application window. Here is where the recorded decoded pager transmissions are decoded and then printed to ASCII for us to read. This appears to work very well and compared to another POXAG decoder like PDW, it was working just as well. And the last digital mode to decode is ADSB. Now ADSB are packets of data transmitted from aircraft on 1090 megahertz. That's 1.09 gigahertz. Obviously to get the best performance for this feature, 
you will need to have an antenna tuned for 1090 megahertz. So you can see here, the bottom table is now showing the received and decoded aircraft sorted by their ICAO number. As the ADS-B modes messages are received and decoded, we start to get each of the fields populate. So we have the flight number, altitude, speed, angle, latitude, longitude, get a message count, and also last message identifier, and a date and time stamp of when the last message was received. Now what I'd like to see here is the ability to connect to open ear via Telnet on the standard base station port of 3003 and bring this data into an application like virtual radar server. We could then visually see these aircraft being plotted onto a map. Now the potential here is actually quite great and it could be that the developers eventually bring in their own version of virtual radar server into the application but it's definitely a waste if all we can do is view the raw data on the screen. We need a way to extract this information so we can record it in some form of database and drill down into this data to view it in more detail. While in ADSB mode, OpenAir does actually write two text files which contain the received ADSB data. Maybe we could write an application that passes that, but having a direct connection via TCP or UDP would be a lot easier. So let's keep an eye on this project and hopefully we'll see some improvements in the near future. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did want to see more content like this, then please don't forget to subscribe. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.